Hi, this is Rob from Twisty Green. Uh, today we're going to show you our digital file uh, for making a coach's clock that would look similar to this. There it is there. So in this coach's clock, basically we have different elements um, such as the coach over here. And then we got skates, we got a hockey player, we got hockey gloves, we have the team logo. And then over here we have the coach's whistle. Down here, um, this can all be customizable. Obviously, if you have a coach that has a different name, um, we, you can customize it to whatever name you want. We include the fonts, uh, links to the fonts that you can download. So you could have those fonts or you can have uh, different fonts, whatever fonts that you want. On the bottom, we've put all the players' names and numbers and the year, of course, and the team name. So, um, And then again, we've customized it with the, uh, this is for the Olds Grizzlies and their black and yellow is their team colors. So we put the yellow back here and black, and black over here. So this is a two layered one. So on the bottom layer is a quarter inch and we basically score lines of where you need to paint the different colors, uh, including underneath here uh, needs to be black as well as over here needs to be black. So we have score lines there where you need to paint and then score lines in here showing where you need to paint the yellow or whatever color your team colors are. With the logo on top, uh, basically um, you can put your own logo there and that is welded in. We will show you on this video later on on how to weld it properly into there so that you can look just like that where it's cut around it. Other option is we are give you just kind of two straight lines straight up so you can just put your logo in there and that's a little easier to do if you're not uh, if you are not familiar in Lightburn on how to weld and stuff like that. So um, whatever options that you want, whatever options easier for you. But like I said in the video later on, we will show you how to weld that properly in Lightburn. So like I was saying earlier, um, we use the quarter inch backer. That's the the first layer, and then the second layer on top um, is an eighth inch. Just uh, either a birch or a Baltic birch works just fine. Um, and we just leave that the wood color. We glue those two together and then we uh, put a couple coats of polyurethane on top of it to give it the nice uh, finish uh, like that. So um, that is our one style. So this is engraved. All these are engraved. So it takes a little while to engrave those uh, on your CO2 laser. Uh, but also we have another version that'd be a little bit faster. Um, this version here you can see instead of engraving the coaches and the skates and the player and that and the puck and the gloves uh, we've actually just scored it so that gives it a little bit different look um, i like the engraved one better but it does take a fair amount longer um, to make so you can make these in any size that you want um, these ones are approximately uh, 12 inches around right now uh, but depending on the bed size that you have of your laser, you can create this in any, um, any size that you want to, so it can expand up. All right, today what we're gonna do is show you how to use these uh, coaches clocks and add uh, your team custom logo. Now, obviously uh, you can also change the name, the font, um, obviously the players and the year and the team name would be all different. So you can change that to whatever you want. Um, I'll include the fonts that I use here, but you can use whatever fonts you want. But the main part we're going to be focusing on is up here where we're going to put a logo in just this engraved area. And then we're going to put another logo here and kind of weld it and show you the two different options that you would have um, for the uh, adding a logo, a logo to the clock. So, uh, we're just going to go over here. It's my um, son's team logo from last year. We actually made these clocks for the coaches on his team. Um, so basically the easiest way is you have your, your logo that you're going to need to have vectorized. Um, and basically what we're going to do is, we'll change this to line. Um, so we can see here, putting this in here uh, into this spot, this is the top layer of the clock uh, right here. And then over here with the ones with the score, blue score lines, 
Um, those are just so we know where to paint. But this is the back of the clock, which is slightly bigger. So this little lip here will be showing um, right over here. That little lip will be showing around the clock because the backing is bigger than the top. And then, of course, um, all these areas are cut out. So you'll need to paint the different colors. Um, so going back to the logo, well, if we select the logo, we can see it's a little bit too big because it's going over the edge. So I'm just going to bring it down in size here. Uh, oops. Of course, we want to keep the ratio. So let's undo that by going Control Z. Let's click on the ratio so it stays the same. And let's try this again. And now it'll keep the same ratio because it won't make it look all weird. So basically, we center that off best we can. And that's what your clock would look like. So if we select this clock, and I go to preview. Um, all the dark areas there would be engraved, uh, including the names of the, of the players. Again, like you would customize this with the coach's name and the, and the year and the team name. Add the logo, and uh, this is this file is good to go. All these black lines here would be cut lines, um, and then. Uh, where the black is would be all engraved. So that's what your cloak, your clock cloak, clock would look like in the end. Okay, so for our another option here is to actually um, weld in the logo. So here we have the logo just um, kind of just sitting in this area where we can engrave. That's the simplest way. This next way is a little bit more difficult, but uh, the results are a little better, but we'll show you how to do it. So let's put the logo in. Um, it needs to cover both these lines, these rim lines here. So this line here and that line there. Um, so what we want to do is center this logo the best we can. And we can do that right here. So something like that looks pretty good. Um, so the next step is we're going to want to put a, a cut layer. So it's just going to be an outer rim going around the entire logo to cut, kind of like we have on all these different elements, like the whistle right there. So what we do is we select this offset shapes tool. Um, now we can change the settings here. You can actually see it previews. So I think 0.1 looks pretty good. Like if we go 0.2. That's too much. Um, point, uh, let's say 0 0.5. Uh, it's a little bit too tight, so I like point 0.1 better. So point 0.1 is good, and then I hit OK. We're going to change the color first. We're going to move my head out of the way here. And we'll change the color of this outside cut um, to the red, because all the red on here is cut line. The black is engraved. Right, so we want it to be red. So we go down here and select the red layer and we change it to red. Now, you'll notice that there is a couple of spots in here that have red, uh, just the way the tool worked. Um, there was some, enough space in there to put some lines. So, but we wanted to delete that. So let's ungroup it, select over here, and then just select these spots and we're going to delete them. So there was a spot there, there's a spot there, there's this one here. We'll delete that one. And I think, oh, I see one down here. So that's why it's good to change the color of it so that you know uh, which one it is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try welding this logo um, into here. So what we do, or this uh, line, this cut line into the clock. So we select the clock first. Then let's select this line, which actually is all connected. It selects that one as well. And then we can go over here and we would select the Boolean subtract. Oh, that is not correct. Control Z. Um, let me try. Oh, I think I know what I'm doing wrong. We will try this. We will select the outside first, then hit shift 
and then take the logo. Now let's try the Boolean subtract. Ah, now that works perfect. So you can see the order makes a difference. You want to make sure you select the outer layer first and then the logo outer layer. So now we have that cut. So now if we take a look at the logo and your logo could be whatever shape you wanted, uh, this would work for anything. And let's select that clock and see what it's going to actually look like. So let's go to preview. And there it is. There is your logo with the cut lines around it. So those would be your two different options that you could have for the clock. You can either have it with the logo um, and have it uh, welded around it or just put the logo in the space provided. Like I said, the other one's a little bit easier, uh, but this one looks a little bit nicer, I think. So it's up to you. Now I want to talk a little bit about the clock backing. Uh, you can see the clock backing over here um, is basically um, just slightly bigger than the actual top layer of the clock. And these uh, blue lines are basically just guidelines um, showing you uh, where you need to paint in that. So if you want the outer layer, which will be showing over here, um, this whole outer layer is showing on the outside. So we had this, ours, the colors are black and yellow. So we had this section black. And then inside here was yellow. So that shows up underneath these elements here would be all yellow. Um, and then underneath here, so we've cut out the clock uh, spots, like for the, where the clock numbers are, and those are, are going to be black. So you would paint these little blue sections here black as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's a center circle um, where you're going to put your clock mechanism through, right? So that needs to be the same size as that one. Uh, but these blue guidelines just give you an idea where you need to paint. For our example, we painted this all gold in here or yellow, and then black in these little circles, and then black on the outer edge. So that just kind of gives you um, some score lines. Now these blue lines need to be score lines. So the settings on your um, laser need to be set to score, uh, whatever those might be, each laser is different. And if you use Glowforge, um, I think you can just select these, this color uh, blue to be score, and then this outer layer would be cut. Uh, we usually use a quarter inch on the backing, so this piece would be quarter inch, and then the top layer would be eighth inch on top. Um, and then we glue them together um, after we've painted them. So yeah, that's what you get. Uh, you get those three. Um, and again, you can put it in your own logo in there and weld it, and, or you can just put your logo on top in that section over there. Whatever way you want to do it uh, is totally up to you. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Thank you.